Hi everybody, welcome to the Actors Academy. Thank you for tuning in today. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys 30 points for beginners, intermediate, and advanced actors. I wanted to do a video for you guys that included a bunch of different points, so it's an easy video to be able to go through, but also it's not a video that's gonna be two to three hours long. Now, on some of these points, you may want some more in-depth details, and that's fine. If you guys are wanting to go and find those details and what they are, I'm gonna be leaving links right up here, so you're gonna see while I'm talking about a point, if you guys want more details on some of those points, I've already done videos on some of them, so you can just go ahead and click those links and you'll go straight to those videos that will be able to give you some more in-depth details on some of those points. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Point number one. So here's the first thing that you guys have to do. You have to find the facts. Now, what are the facts? Well, when you're auditioning, sometimes you're gonna get either a scene or you're gonna be able to get the whole script. It's lucky if you get the whole script, you're not always gonna get it. But what you wanna do for yourself is to find all the facts of your character. Sometimes when you get a script, you may have ideas and opinions on things, and that's fine. But what you ultimately wanna find is the facts. What is the undeniable of your script, of your scene? So for example, what is your character's occupation of work? Does your character go to school or do they not go to school? Are they in a relationship or are they not in a relationship? Do they have their parents or do they not have their parents? If you are having a scene and you do not have all the facts, let's say you only have two facts and the facts that you know are, hey, my character has a girlfriend and my character goes to high school. Well, that's gonna really limit you on how you can go and portray this character. But if you have more facts, you realize, yes, this character's in high school. Yes, this character has a girlfriend but they also just got fired from their job last week. Someone stole their car. They have a big fight coming up in the next two days that they're trying to prepare for desperately. All of a sudden, this builds a deeper understanding and picture of who your character is, and that will affect how you will play that character. And right there, that's only with five facts. Now imagine when you're going through a scene, there's so many more facts that you can find as long as you're willing and open to find those facts. Now point number two is to find your character's inner monologue. Now the inner monologue are the thoughts that go on in your character's head. So if you and I were to go into a room, let's imagine it's, there's a big party going on and we don't know anybody here, but we are dropped into this party and we're in the middle. We're in the middle of this room. We're both gonna have thoughts that go on through our heads. Some of them may be the same, some of them may be different, but we're gonna have something running through our heads. That is our inner monologue. Now the characters we play are all gonna have different personalities. Some of them are confident, some of them are not confident. Some of them love people, some of them hate people. That is gonna affect your character's inner monologues, how they think and how they perceive the world. So you wanna find for yourself what is your character's inner monologue. Point number three is you're gonna have to have confidence. In this business, confidence is what's gonna help you. If you're going into an audition and you're scared and you're nervous and you're shy, what ends up happening is a wall gets put up in front of us. And our work ultimately isn't as good as if we're confident. It's kind of like if we want to go and give a speech at school. If we're really confident, hey, we can go up in, in front of the classroom and we'll be fine. But if we're nervous and we're kind of scared and we're kind of shy, maybe our voice breaks, maybe we're kind of talking soft and people can't really hear us in the back of the room, a lot goes on and a lack of confidence can put up a wall for ourselves. So what you wanna have is you wanna have confidence in your craft, but also your confidence in order to interact and be around people. Point number four is to use backstage to your advantage. So if you guys are gonna go and try and submit for projects on your own, you wanna self-submit yourself for a movie or a TV show or a commercial or whatever it is you wanna submit yourself for, Backstage can be a great platform. It is not the only online submission platform, but it is a very popular submission platform. The reason I like Backstage for a lot of actors, especially starting out and just starting to get into this business, is because you can see what projects are available for you to submit for, for free. Now, of course, when you wanna go and actually submit for the project, you do have to pay for the platform. Any good platform that's gonna allow you to submit is gonna require you to pay to use their platform. But not every platform is gonna let you see what is available for free. That is what Backstage does. Backstage allows you to see which projects are available for free, and then if you wanna use their services, then of course you will have to pay them in order to do so, but Backstage can be a great helping hand for you guys along your journey. Point number five is to watch great movies. Watch Oscar-nominated movies. The more good movies that we watch, the better our acting can naturally start to become just because we're watching good projects. If we wanted to be great master pianists, would we just go and watch so-so piano players? No, we would go and listen and watch great piano players 
The same is for acting. Start watching great projects. The next point for us is to read. As actors, you want to have pretty decent reading skills. You don't have to be amazing or perfect, but you do want to be able to read because you may be in a room where you're in a table and you're with a bunch of other actors who are going to go and read a script that they've never really gone through before. It might be your first time reading the script. You want to have decent reading abilities so then when you're reading the script, you're not going, uh, and to be or not uh, to be. You don't want to have pauses. You want to just be able to go through the lines very clean and easily. Just by practicing and working every single day on just reading a little bit, let's say you get a book, any book you want, and you just read 10 to 20 pages a day, you're working on your reading and you're developing your reading a little bit more, it'll help you in the long run. Point number seven is to work on your memorization skills. So as an actor, if you wanna get into this business, memorization is gonna be very important for you. So you wanna have it be a skill that you can actually do very well. You don't want it to be very hard for you to go and memorize your lines, you want it to be an easy process. The next point is to have a good setup for yourself when you're doing your self tapes. Have a setup that you like, have a setup that you actually enjoy and that you're used to. The worst thing an actor can do is get a submission for a self tape that they have to record for themselves and then not have a setup at home to be able to record their self tapes to get a good submission off to the cast and directors. It can be a real hindrance for you. The best thing you can do is just know how to go and set up your self tapes, have a plan for yourself, have the lights, have the cameras, have everything you need already set and prepared instead of trying to prepare on the day of prepare early point number nine wear proper clothing for your auditions when you're auditioning for something you want to have the essence of your character come out we never want to go and wear the full costume of the character for example if you're going into the audition room and you're auditioning for a cop but you have a whole tie-dye shirt on in bright colors it'll be harder to picture you as the character. You want something that gives off the essence of the character. So maybe if you come in with just a black shirt and some jeans, that would be fine. It gives somewhat of the essence of that character off compared to wearing a tie-dye bright shirt. Point number 10, the eyes are the gateway into the soul. Remember, your eyes are telling a huge story. So don't be the actor who goes and just looks everywhere in the room and can't keep a focused eye contact because it's gonna hurt you in the long run. Point number 11 is to treat others with respect. In this business, your reputation is very important, so you don't wanna tarnish it. The best thing you can do is just to treat others with respect. Don't let other people walk over you at all. That doesn't mean to just cower away from people, but it does mean to show respect for the people who are around you and the people who help you out in this business. Show your respect. The next point is for your monologue. So now, if you're gonna be doing any sort of theater at all, uh, this is a really important point for you guys to get. You guys will have to have monologues that you're going to be presenting. Typically, it will be two monologues. For these monologues, I typically suggest that they be one to one and a half minutes long. Uh, you can go for a whole three minute monologue. I know a lot of people who do it, but you don't need to. If you can get a great monologue in one to one and a half minutes, then that's all you need. You don't need to elongate it. So if I had two monologues to do, I would have one of my monologues maybe be a minute and a minute and a half, and I would have my second monologue also be about a minute or a minute and a half. You don't have to do three to five minute crazy monologues. Next point, remember it is a numbers game. So within this business, you just have to audition a lot. Most likely you're not gonna go and book your first audition out ever. Typically actors have to audition quite a bit. Now the more auditions you get, the better chance you have at booking. If you get just 10 auditions this year compared to next year, you getting 100 auditions, well, if you have 100 auditions, you have 100 opportunities of potentially booking a part. If you only have 10 auditions, you only have 10 possible opportunities. So it's a numbers game. The more auditions you get, the more potential opportunity you have to actually booking. Our next point here, which I believe is point number 14, is to get good headshots. The headshot is the thing that's gonna help get you into the room for either your agent and manager meeting or for your actual audition. You want your headshots to be very, very, very good. I did a video before on how you can go and actually get free headshots. So if you guys are wanting to see that, the link is already gonna be up there, but it'll help you guys out a lot. Headshots are very important. Do not underestimate them. Next, remember that you are just playing different versions of yourself. When you go and audition for a part, it is still you. You can't go and go and change who you are as a person. You have been developing who you are for the past 18, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, however old that you actually are. When you're auditioning, remember, it's gonna be your voice. Your voice is speaking. Your physicality is being used. Your thought process is in the room working on that character. Everything is you just playing different versions of yourself. 
All right, for this point, we're going to be talking about listening. You, as an actor, have to listen to the person you are doing a scene with. A lot of times what will happen with actors, especially actors who are starting out, is they will look at the other person and they're going to be the whole time waiting for the line that they have to say next. As an actor, we have to make sure we're listening to the other person, not just what our own words are going to have to be spoken next. So listen to the other person in this scene. Point number 17, remember to say thank you. It's a very powerful word actually and not a lot of people will say thank you to the people who are helping them out You got a lot of people who are doing your makeup who is uh, going and doing your hair Who's going to go and show you hey, this is where you have to go They're showing you around they're doing everything to help you and help build the scene Make sure you thank people for the job that they do. They're trying to help you out. They're trying to get the best work So thank people point number 18 Show up on time. Don't be late if you're late they don't like it and it's very easy to get fired. Point number 19 is music. You as an actor can use music to your advantage. So if you're going to try and create a character or you're working on a character or something's going on, you can use music to your advantage to help you. Sometimes we need just that little pathway or gateway into the characters we're playing. And it's not always an easy process for us depending on the characters. Maybe one week you get a character who's so easy for you to play that then all of a sudden the next week you get a character, it's the hardest thing in the world for you to do. That's fine. It happens to all of us. This is where our training comes in to try and help us get those characters to get closer to who those characters actually are. So music can be a big advantage to help you get into that point. Next point is know the world that you are in. So when you're auditioning for a part, is this for a part for HBO? Is it for Disney Channel? Is it for Nickelodeon? Is it for Amazon? Is it for Netflix? What is the world that you're in? Is it a really heavy world where everything is super sad and dark and depressing? Or is it super light where nothing can make your character sad? Know the world that you're in because it will affect your acting and how you portray the characters that you're auditioning with. So for this next point here, it's a little bit more of a technical point, but it comes with the eyes. If you're playing stronger characters, typically stronger characters don't really blink that much at all. But if you're playing a weaker character, weaker characters tend to blink a little bit more. So it's just a little bit of a technical point. You do not want to think about this too much, but if you're doing a self tape and you're looking back and you're seeing your character, you can realize, hey, how much is your character blinking? Because the more they blink, the weaker they will seem. The less they blink, the stronger they will seem. Now don't go to the extreme and don't say, okay, I'm gonna play strong characters, so I'm never gonna blink at all, because that's gonna look weird. There is a happy balance to this, but if you're doing yourself tapes and you look back and you're wondering, hey, what is going on with this? This could be an essence or quality that is showing off in your characters, whether or not you want it or you don't. For this next point here, we're gonna be talking about entrances and exits. Imagine you have a scene, you gotta go and ask your boss for a raise, but right beforehand, your girlfriend just broke up with you, and now you gotta go and ask your boss for a raise. The energy and what you bring in is gonna be different compared to if right before you walk in here, you realize you just won the lottery, but now you're gonna go and ask your boss for a raise anyways. Well, that's gonna change how you walk into the room and the energy that you have. And also the stories that we have at the end will also affect our characters and what they bring. For our next point here, it's just literally asking yourself the question. When you're going and doing your scene or you're going and doing your monologue, after you speak your lines, this is a practice that you can use for yourself, ask yourself, would I actually say these lines in this way if this was the circumstances I was in? So let's say, for example, you have the line of, I love you. Well, when you say the line, I love you, ask yourself, is this actually how I would say the line if I was with the person that I haven't seen for years and I finally get to tell them I love them? Or is it not? And you have to be honest with yourself. So sometimes if you have a scene, you might go and just say, I love you. Well, what does that tell? What does that show? It doesn't really show that you actually love the character compared to if you can look them in the eyes and you can tell them, I love you. It builds a whole totally different story for yourself, but you have to ask yourself, is this actually how I would say the line? When I say it, it can be a great practice tool for you guys and it can help keep you honest. For our next point here, avoid a ton of hand gestures, meaning in your normal everyday life, hey, maybe you hand gesture. Maybe if you're trying to explain a point, you hand gesture, that is natural. But when we are acting and if we're in a scene, a lot of times bad actors will overuse their hands too much when they're in a scene. So if I had to say, I love you to someone, I'm not gonna go and say, I love you. I'm doing all these hand movements. Maybe there's some specific scenario out there where it can work, but more often than not, you wanna be careful with the hand movements you have. Again, if you're trying to explain something and you're talking, that's fine. You'll see me, naturally, I have hand movements and hand gestures that I have when I'm explaining and talking. But when I'm going and I'm doing a scene and I'm working across another actor, 
I don't always have these different hand gestures that are going on because I'm in an actual conversation instead of an explaining mode, just like we're in now. For our next point here, which I believe is point number 25, avoid leaning forward too much. So typically what will happen, and you can really see this a lot in theater, we can kind of cover it up more in camera. But if you're on the stage or you see someone on the stage, typically a lot of times what younger actors will do, people who are starting out, they're lean forward like this. So it looks really weird when an actor is here and they're leaning forward the whole time they're talking to somebody. Because in our everyday life, naturally, we're gonna be standing up here. You guys probably can't even see my face when I'm doing that, but you get the idea. We don't wanna have too much of a lean forward. We just wanna be upright and straight how we normally are. Doesn't mean we will never lean forward, but typically bad actors lean forward just too much. Next point, avoid the leg slaps. This will happen a lot with actors, you'll see it. They'll say, what do you mean? Why did you do that? Where'd you come from? Blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is, right after they say a line, they feel the need to go and slap their legs. Avoid it. It looks really bad. It also doesn't work if you're working in front of the camera and then constantly the editor has to go, oh my gosh, this person just keeps slapping their legs and they have to work on sound and everything. So avoid the leg slaps because typically you don't need it as much as you think. Do we do it in our everyday life? Yes, but we do not do it 1,000 times in a conversation. Maybe we do it once or not at all. For our next point here, have fun. Enjoy the process. Don't let the negative get to you. And there will be negatives sometimes that will happen. You're saying, oh my gosh, my lines, I'm having a hard time memorizing, or oh, I didn't have a good experience here. Whatever it may be, try to find the joy and try to keep having fun because it will help you with your longevity within this career. Our next point, bring your most authentic self to the room. Bring who you are. Casting directors love to see who you actually are. They don't wanna see a robot. They don't wanna see somebody who's trying to impress them. They just wanna see you. They wanna see your human soul and what you actually have to offer and bring. So make sure you bring your most authentic self to the room. They're not trying to look for anybody else. They're trying to look for you. For our next point here, play the scene with different emotions. This is a good practice for you guys. If I have a scene and I'm having a hard time trying to find the nuances within this piece and I'm doing everything I can and I'm just having a tricky time with it, sometimes what I will do is just to play the scenes with a bunch of different emotions. So I might say, hey, I'm gonna play this whole scene happy. Now I'm gonna play the whole scene mad. Now I'm gonna play the whole scene sad. Now I'm gonna play the whole scene excited. And what I tend to find is I'll find those moments of when this character actually maybe is a little angry, when this character is excited, when this character is happy. And I can find and also feel when it naturally starts to place itself within either the scene or the monologue, whatever I happen to be working with, but I force emotions onto the piece as a practice and an exercise, and then typically I'll find where it will be useful within the actual piece itself. And for our last point here, use the cookbook method. It's a really great way to practice. It's a really great way to keep developing and working on your craft. I still use it today. It's very helpful. It's super beneficial. If you guys wanna go and see the video for that, just go ahead and click the link right up there and you guys will be able to go straight to that video. So this was a long video for you guys, but I wanted to put it all together for you. These are huge points to help yourself. Again, if you guys wanted to see any specifics for these, go ahead and go back to those points and just click the links that'll be right up there and it'll be super easy for you guys to go and check those out. So I hope you guys like this video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with everything. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you guys. Also, I'll be leaving the 10 hour acting masterclass 2.0 or newly enhanced version. This is for the advanced actors who are wanting to really progress their craft. That's gonna be down in the description down below and also in the comment section if you guys are interested in that, as well as our 10 acting resume templates. Alrighty, see you guys next time. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.